talking about? You bow before you enter the sanctuary. He said, yeah, that's what the people do. It's because we once had a cantor who was six feet tall and the do doorway is only five and 11. And so he had a bow to get in and everyone thought that was a ritual like in the Catholic church where you stop and you dip your finger in the holy water and do what they do with their hands. So sometimes our traditions are strange to us. In the Talmud, we find a very interesting discussion between the sages, the rabbis, and Rabbi Yehuda HaNasi, the great Yehuda HaNasi, who concluded the writing of the Mishnah. And Yehuda HaNasi says that when it comes to the Shema, it has to be written in and recited in Hebrew and only in Hebrew. And that's the statement of Yehuda HaNasi. But the rabbis say, no, the Shema can be recited in any language that you like and that you can understand. So the Gemara seeks to clarify the argument here. What's the reason for Rabbi Yehuda Nasi's opinion? And the Gemara answers, the source for his halacha lies in the emphasis on the word and these words which I command you this day will be upon your heart. Will be means as they are, so shall they always be, i.e. you have to read in the original Hebrew language or it doesn't count. And Gemara seeks to clarify the reasons for the rabbis and they respond, the source upon which the rabbis base their opinion is as it is stated, Shema Yisrael, hear Israel, that you have to recite the Shema in any language that you can hear and understand. Understanding is what's most important for them. The discussion follows once more as the Gemara explains how Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi and the rabbis each contend with the source cited by the other. And according to Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, he says, isn't it also stated here, Israel? How does this he explain does he what how does he explain this verse and the Gemara responds he requires this verse in order to derive a different halacha and that is that make your ears hear what your mouth utters in other words you have to say the Shema out loud you can't say it to yourself even if you're the only one around you have to recite it so that your own ears can hear it uh, and from where do the rabbis derive that one must recite Shema audibly? They don't. They don't accept the literal interpretation of the word Shema. Rather, they believe that in accordance with the one who said, one who recited Shema in a manner inaudible to his own ears has fulfilled all of his obligations. According to the rabbis, isn't it also written, and they will be? The Gemara answers, they too require this expression to derive that one may not recite Shema out of order. Now, I'm not going to go on with the rest of this argument, but think for a moment, what do we just listen to in this discussion? There are really a number of things that are being dealt with. What's, what's the most major element of the discussion between Rabbi Yehuda Nasi and the rabbis? Can anyone guess? No one? Well, the first thing they're dealing with and the most important is you have to have a Torah base for your halachic decisions. So where do they come from? And which words do you use? And does that mean that if Yehuda Hanasi, the great Rav, says that this is the halacha because this is how I read this verse, does everyone else have to agree? No, but you cannot use any one verse for more than one derivation of a halakha. So once you've used something, it's gone. You can't use it anymore. And then they're dealing with the issue of, do we have to pray in Hebrew? And I'm, if you're all on page 80 and you look at Uval Zion, you will see that the Uval Zion is a prayer which is written in two distinct languages. Hebrew, as it quotes from the Torah, where it says, Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzvaot, um, 
Baruch Kavod Adonai Mim Komo. And those are two lines that are recited three times in the morning service, and this is the third time. And then it's translated into Aramaic in the prayer. Why? Because they're following the rabbis, not Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, that any prayer can be done in any language that you understand. This discussion, by the way, goes on, and it even states that the rabbis believe whether you're reading Torah or Haftarah, it needs to be recited in a language that you can understand. And so in the ancient world, in Israel, in the days of the temple, there would be translators. Every time someone read an Aliyah from the Torah, someone else would translate it into Aramaic, which was the lingua franca, and so on and so on and so on. So it doesn't matter what language you pray in. God understands all languages. And now we return to this service, which is the reason we're really here. Page 82, Kaddish Shalem. Yitkar Avi Kaddash me Rabbah. Amen. <laughs> It's been so long that we've done a morning service here that I remember that when we do the Mishra Berach and we do the El Mali Rachmin, we usually open the ark. And as I said, we haven't done this during the week for two years, so I'm going to do it. Misha Berach Avotenu Ava Mishchak V'yakov Zara Rivka Rachel Leia Hu Yivorech V'yrapei Et HaCholim Merciful God, we ask you to bring healing to everyone whose names we're about to mention, to all whom we have in our thoughts. Please help restore their bodies and spirits, granting them life and happiness. Hill McDaniel, Reggie Hefner, Pat Menneker, Leslie Klein, Rosie Weinzweig, Barbara Gandell, Amanda Berger, David Shapiro, Gloria Winter, Kana, Miriam, Bat Yochana, Abraham, Hanish, Ben, Liba, Michael, Ben, Leah, Daniel, Lezer, Ben, Shoshana, Nechom, Bat Yeh, Bat Yochavit, Miriam, Nachom, Yisrael, Ben, Shendel, Rochel, Yaakov, Ben, Sora, Mordechai, Ben, Zitzel, Eta, Sivi, Bat, Kretzel, Michael, Zalman, Ben, Mate, Naomi, Rina Shana Bachashana, Shalamit Mariel Batsapora Leia, Yochana Chaya Batsapora, Vida Bat Avraham, Mea Ben Shmuel, Peggy Willis, Dina Itkabat 